Hey everybody, I'm back with a quick video on how I paint my race fairings in the backyard and get better than average results. It's, I'm not a professional by any means. I know guys who know guys who will wrap their entire race bike for peanuts or you know, dad runs a paint stop, shop or uncle knows how to paint. But to me, half the fun is doing it yourself. And when it comes to stuff like this, the aesthetics that to me still may, may mean um, are, are still important. Um, the, uh, the more money you save on things like this, the more money you can save on important things like tires, not last year's tires that have spent the winter in a Canadian garage and are probably terrible. But anyway, I digress. So uh, like anything, um, proper preparation prevents piss poor products. So as, as you've probably he heard or read or seen, um, in uh, in other videos if you're at if you've stumbled across my video it's because you've you you may be looking for this and the the youtube algorithm has sent you here but anyway um it, it's all about preparation um but there are I've, I've come up with some tips and tricks over the last 20 or so years of racing and painting my own body work that really do ner merit uh decent results and don't cost an arm and a leg so yeah it's all about prep um and and the thing is is that um you know, body work is increasingly expensive. Uh, the days of, uh, you know, 350 bucks for an upper, low, upper lower tail fender are, are long gone. So again, you want to get something dif decent. If it goes to better, do goes together better when you dry fit, always dry fit, test fit before you paint anything as excited as you are to, uh, to make that race bike look pretty. Um, yeah, the better body work is going to net you better results. Most of them come gel coated and, and once you've got everything fitted and, and of course fitting um, even body work to, to this machine uh, took a lot of work. Um, so you don't start painting or priming anything until it's done. So you got everything lined up, you got everything fitted, you got everything test fitted, it, it fits. So then the first step is, is to prep. and. Um, with most gel coats, uh, you don't need to, to really, you know, uh, sand the crap out of it. But um, mo all the stuff I've, I've bought in, in my hometown of Brandon, Manitoba, Canada, about 45,000 people in the middle of the prairies. So this isn't Southern California where there's a high performance paint shop and booth around every corner. Uh, this is like your US Pet Boys or maybe Aldi in the UK. Like it's a, it's, you can get uh, automotive paint supplies and and a new toilet at Canadian Tire. So anyway, in their automotive paint section, they have uh, 3M sandpaper. I got some 600 grit. That was just to scuff the gel coat, and um, I didn't really need much of it. Uh, the this is the Moto Forza fairing. It's it, it comes in decent shape. So just to get it scuffed up. Um, so I got some 600 here, and what I've done is I've got some old seat foam. And this is sticky back, so I cut off a little section here and then stuck the um, the sandpaper to the back here. So it gives a bit of a, a bit of um, uniformity in some, but also allows it to bend around curves so you're not just using your, your fingers. So again, didn't require a ton of stuff. And so once that was done, um, I, I, you know, into the backyard and you'll see my awesome backyard slash paint booth in a moment. I went back there. Um, and washed it off with a garden hose and you know gave it a good wash down uh, let it dry in the sun and then started the the real prep process so I picked up some of this stuff I wasn't sure what it would be like but this is Duplicolor automotive prep multi-purpose foaming prep cleaner um, and uh, that plus some of this blue um, um, uh, what is that called paper towel and and I did that at every step and it really helped uh, clean it and 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 prep it um, so I gave every panel a wipe down before that with this the good news is if you use it with with this it you don't throw it away you let it dry out and you can reuse it for something else so you give it a good wipe and then I use this so this is gray high build primer um, there's various uh, varieties of it out there on the market but um, um, it's a good primer that, you know, dries really quickly <coughs> within 15 minutes <coughs> to half an hour. You can then go and, and I always wet sand it with like a thousand or 2000 grit. And then, and then what happens is it has like a, a, a satin finish like this. And as soon as you wet sand it, when it's wet, 
um, it gives this really smooth sheen. So it does knock down the high points and, and help, um, and help uh, smooth it out and give you a good finish for your uh, top coat. So a couple of coats of that, wet sand in between, um, a bit of fill if you need to. You can use the good old Bondo stuff here. This is the two part stuff, there's a hardener. And then I also got this, um, uh, oh, this is the hardener itself. There, there also had a tube of, of one stage stuff for like tiny little scratches. And again, as the amount of time that you wanna spend on this is up to you. It's a race bike, it's not a show bike. You know, you can, you can make it look beautiful or you can make it look good from 50 feet at 50 miles an hour. So that's what I did. So then the fun part comes and that's, that's, your, um, that's your base color coat. And you know, I, I, I'm not a purist, like this Ducati should be one color and one color only, bright red. Um, nope, I'm gonna do shades of gray with some blue. Uh, you can make some really bad mistakes in going this way. You can get uh, automotive colors uh, custom mixed for you. Like you can get Nardo gray from you know the paint store, but you can get a pretty darn close to gray, which I'll show you in a bit um, from your, your hardware store. So I just picked Rust-Oleum. Um, the good news is, is this seems to go over everything fine. <coughs> it, it doesn't, it, it interacts well with this stuff and it also works well with the clear that I'll talk to you in a, in a bit. So you, you put on your base colors and there's varying different degrees and techniques of doing this. If you're gonna shoot it all one color, always get a bit extra, get two. Um, you'll always use it somewhere else. Actually, this is one from a couple of years ago. So store paint correctly, it'll last uh, a long time. Um, and then if it comes to masking, I, I, there's some, some tricks that I've learned and this is where you need to go to a automotive paint supply place. So this is proper, um, I don't know if it's 3M or another company, but it's, uh, it's, ma it's proper masking tape and it's, and it's their one eighth inch, which is great if you want to um, mask around curves or, or swoops or, or whatever. It's great for masking around, um, like coming up with a number plate um, shape if you're, uh, if you're gonna paint on your number plates. But what it leaves is a nice sharp edge on the edge of the, um, of the masking. Um, what I've seen is guys cheap out and use, you know, the, the, that you can see the tan colored tape there. Like that's, that's, it's called masking tape, but it's garbage. So this is great for the tight edges, but what something thin like this requires though, is to follow it up with again, um, 3M. This is good masking tape. Um, it doesn't leave behind any residue, um, in various sizes. So to, to do the, the fairings on this bike, um, I had, I, I had a little bit of this left and I ran out. So I had to buy a, a new bit of that, but this will last forever, forever. It'll last a long time for any number of more projects. So you can end up masking your unpainted or, or areas that you want to paint a different color just with layer after layer of this. Um, I also found this at Princess Auto, which is even like a Canadian version of Harbor, Harbor Freights and it's masking um, plastic. What it does, it just saves you a bit of tape um, and uh, it, it seemed to work really well. It comes in various roles and um, you know, it, does a, it does a pretty good job if you ask me. Um, so what I do is I, I usually do my base um, uh, colors, mask the design I want, that sort of thing. But the, uh, the one other trick that I've come up with is um, using, um, I think it's called isopropyl alcohol. So I've got a little spray bottle and I've left it somewhere else, I'll find it. But that, and again, more of this blue paper, it's, it's a really good last thing you do before you paint um, prep. Doesn't leave behind any residue, it evaporates really quickly. So even if you spray it on, wipe it down and miss a spot, by the time you go to shoot your first coat of paint, um, it's, it's already evaporated. So, so that's really nice. So once you've done all that and you, you've, you've masked that, um, it's, it's key to really read the label. Um, you know, this stuff here, and again, this is like $9 Canadian a can. So it is not high quality stuff. Well, it's good quality, but it's not high tech stuff. Um, but, uh, it says, you know, um, uh, recoat within one hour or after 48 hours. And if it says after 48 hours, my advice for you is just to wait. I'm an impatient person. I'm excited about getting things done. I want to see it look all nice and shiny, but keep in mind like, okay, I, I painted the light blue on this day and then I got to do the light gray and then I got to do the dark gray. Like all those stages have to wait. If you rush it and you put, uh, you mask this too soon, you put tape over it too soon. 
you're going to kick yourself when you go to pull the paint the tape off and and paint comes with it so just be patient um, follow the guidelines on the can and uh, and and use that as a guideline so the other thing you see I'm wearing some blue gloves here this is mainly to uh, to uh, keep uh, grease from my fingers uh, from the paint uh, some of the stuff though especially this stuff uh, tells you you know don't expose it to skin but you know yeah maybe I should be wearing a long sleeve shirt long sleeve pants but I don't do this for a living so I'm not constantly exposing myself to to this sort of uh, chemical so the other thing and and I'll, I'll show you some some details here in a bit is what a lot of times happens is the guys go spray uh, paint their their race bikes with spray cans from Canadian Tire and then they drip some oil or gasoline or God forbid brake fluid on it and it and it wrecks the paint immediately and it looks like crap that's because they haven't put any sort of clear coat over top and it's one part clear coat that is probably right beside this in the hardware aisle is garbage don't bother with it it's a waste of time you could spend money on a compressor and a gun and and buy bulk um, clear coat from the automotive paint supply store but that gets pretty expensive what I've found is that this stuff uh, spray max 2k clear glamour they also have a clear mat or satin I think it's called um, it's it's all in one in a can they're they used to be around 35 bucks a can now they're up over 40 that's two parts so you you puncture a, a container in here that that mixes the two part in here you have 48 hours of, of pot life here but for spray painting a bike where you don't need gallons of this stuff a couple cans of this and and you're set now you can see by the warning labels that it's explosive it's flammable and it's deadly so even though you may be spraying this outside um, you're really going to need to make sure you've got some some um, uh, respiratory protection so a cloth mask like this is fine for this low vox stuff like the paint and the primer but when it comes to this stuff you are going to need to spend some money on a proper mask and again this came from princess auto um, it's a decent quality one by all accounts but it just adds that extra layer of protection when you're when you're spraying this stuff even outside because it's it's poison but it's the real deal and yeah you're not going to produce concours level um, finishes with this you're still going to get a little bit of orange peel and, and a purist will say that's terrible but this is a race bike the main point of this is to give it a bit of durability and save some aggravation if you spill gasoline uh, Varsol, WD-40, uh, any of that stuff um, on your bike, which oftentimes happens at the racetrack. So um, how does it look when it's done? Well, I've, I'm in the middle of a process here. So following all the, uh, the, the painting and recoating rules correctly, this is the tail section. And so this is French satin blue with kind of like a uh, ceramic Mazda gray with a red stripe. And of course, when it all comes together, I, I think it'll look okay my bike I don't care if you like the color code or not but you can see from from the lighting it has a really nice glossy finish is it perfect no should you put on six more coats and wet sand between every one of them yeah but the bottom line is it's it's a durable paint that again if I get some some chemical on it it's not going to hurt the one thing I have learned is no matter how well you mask or at least for me no matter how well I mask you always get some bleed through like I swear this area here I had the blue um, uh, striping masking tape I had green tape over top of it this whole back area was covered in plastic there's no way any red paint is going to get there how the hell that ended up there I don't know did I take the time to mask everything off and spray it blue to cover it off nope I just cleared over it so as you can see this has some some clear coat over it so this one's done and it's had one day of curing and of course you can handle it that's the other nice thing about this this automotive spray touch-up paint in a can is that it acts like the real deal is that you know um, another day of curing isn't going to hurt and it's going to help but what it really does is it, it acts like an automotive paint where time is is money when it comes to automotive painting and and it's it's it tacks up really quickly and and dries really quickly so so this piece is is basically done all that's left is um is some graphics and again like you can see um you know you could 
you can tell there's some orange peel there, but it's it's you're not going to go there and, and scrape off the paint with your fingernail like you can if you don't use a clear coat on there. I've learned too is that uh, some of the, the the edges here you always put a little bit extra on the edges be careful not to cause it to uh, to run but these areas are more exposed and you also paint the areas that are hard to get to first I, I remember reading a book somewhere about you know painting your your car and your garage or your driveway and and one of the the paint guys said like you always go over these edges first and then and then do the larger bits of the panel because if you just hope that as you pass the the spray can over top that you get enough product on here it's it's not going to happen so off to my uh, beautiful spray booth here also known as my backyard yeah my lawn's a mess we don't care we're not going to waste water on growing grass so this is the uh, belly pan so this is the second um, coat of clear this has already had one coat of clear on it that's dried and you'll see when you do paint outside the bright colors and the reflection tend to attract bugs but anyway this is the belly pan you you see maybe this much of it the whole time but it needs an extra coat of clear I think because it takes a lot of uh, a lot of beating and over here is the uh, upper fairing so as I said you paint the difficult to reach parts first so the first thing I did was spray on the inside of here and on the inside of there and underneath there right because if you'll forget that right it's all about making the outside look good but you need you need product on there too to help it out so this has had one coat of clear on it it has a bit of a matte uh, sheen to it because I need to go over it again and the recoat times for these is that you've got some flexibility there but um, but yeah I need to put down the camera and go back out and and uh, and put on another another coat and I'm probably will use most of a can on the upper fairing itself i used a little bit on the lower fairing for a second um second coat but this is again this is a part of the bike that that's going to take a bit of a beating so i'm going to want to make sure i have you know a lot of product up here too now, again not so much that it runs but enough that it um that it um has a little bit extra durability so the thing is is that you know there's the famous story of the Ducati that someone bought from the dealership that had a dead fly in the clear coat or in the paint of the tank you're you're going to get a bit of that but um you, you know you, you need to know where you live you don't want to be painting out here when it's plus 35 and windy um you don't want to be painting out here when it's 10 degrees and cool so right now it's between 20 and 21 degrees which is really a perfect temperature and the sun is out and it's sort of directly, you know, um, casting down on one section of, of the fairing here. So the, the UV does help dry it. I haven't found any issues with, with leaving it out exposed to the sun. So it's, uh, it's not a bad environment to paint. And of course, the extra ventilation is helpful, even if you do have a proper mask on. So that's it you know that's that's how you can that's how you can do it um so here's my ducati authentic uh little bug that decided to land on some wet clear coat yesterday and gave his life for uh authenticity for vintage ducatis and yeah they do tend to to fly around luckily again this this starts to tack up fairly quickly that you can usually um <laughs> wipe them off or blow them off before they uh get trapped on there so anyway it's uh it's my technique um to to buy the two cans of clear i bought some proper tack cloth i brought bought the proper uh striping tape you know you're you're up to 150 170 dollars canadian but it's still way cheaper than getting it done by a professional shop a fraction of what it would cost to get uh, a bike wrapped um you get some say into your paint scheme like yeah that's a bit different for a vintage ducati but um, the other thing too is that you do it on your own time and, and um, you know, the, the cost to give it one coat um, and, and the delays um, can really add up. And I've paid someone to paint a, uh, a fairing for me once before when I got it home and there was runs in the clear coat. So, you know, it, um, it's just one of those things where with time and practice you can get, I would say these are decent results for a race bike. Um, in your backyard and and some guys have even gotten even better results with more time and and technique and practice but anyway it's fun to do it's not too expensive and um, you really get to make the bike uh, your own which is half the fun 
anyway, like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon. So this is where we're at with the bike assembled and the bodywork on it. So as a wrap up to um, the uh, painting video, uh, I've got the, as you can see, the fairings are mounted, a couple coats of clear on all the panels, got the uh, seat foam uh, also mounted, and then uh, the tank mocked up yet again, but with uh, no carburetors is the tank won't fit if the carburetors are on. So. Uh, one of the next steps, I guess, is to take it to uh, the uh, welding girl that is Brent Law at Cycle Boys and um, get the uh, get the tank modified to fit with the uh, carburetors. So, um, yeah, a couple things that I noticed. Um, I guess this might have been uh, adjusted slightly differently. I think I can turn this a bit so it's more centered there, a little anorak stuff that drives me a bit uh, crazy but I think if I loosen this this is actually supposed to be tilted down a bit so it's centered in that uh, cutout that's what happens when you take things on and off a million times um, fairing mounts up really good quick release fasteners here and here up at the top as well brand new screen so yeah um, you know paint scheme is personal <laughs> love it or hate it I don't care it's my bike I'll get some race numbers uh, mounted up here and then of course onto the uh, the tail section as well so just a quick walk around of, of how the work the bike works and uh, static um, from all the sanding um, has has got the little uh, pills I guess coming off the foam seat pad stick, sticking to everything so yeah next step I guess is uh, is uh, doing the tank modification uh, find a time to actually uh, do that uh, fairing mounts nice and sturdy here and um, yeah on to the next steps so it doesn't look half bad if I do say so myself <laughs>